Hello, I'm Vinícius Quintão, and I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist at the Universidade de São Paulo in Brazil, a former TA2 and a senior TA candidate. In this lecture, I will discuss about the communication with editors. I have no financial conflict of interest, and I'm an associate editor of the Brazilian Journal of Anesthesiology. The agenda for this lecture will be discuss the communication with editors from the author's point of view regarding research and preparation, review and decision, and revising. The communication with editors could be very tendering. This communication process could also be determinant for the paper's acceptance. And understanding who editors are and what they are trying to achieve during their decisions can help you to convey your message and have a successful publication of your paper. There are two types of editors. The professional editor, he or she have only uh, a solo job at the journal and they consider manuscripts for a wide range of research. So uh, your cover letter for this kind of editor should be very straightforward. But the majority of editors are academic editors. Uh, they also hold a faculty position and they consider manuscripts for a less wide range of uh, research. During the preparation, you should uh, 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 choose uh, the proper journal to try to publish your paper. So which journal should I publish in? It's very important to know the editorial line of the journal. So uh, you can know about the editorial line, read the aim and the scope of the journal that uh, are in the journal website. This is an example from the pediatric anesthesia as you can see the aims and the scope of the journal. It's very important during uh, this, 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 uh, this process of uh, choosing uh, the proper journal for you to publish uh, your paper because you cannot uh, lose time, uh, your time during this process and not lose, the, lose time uh, of the editor. So uh, it's also very important to read the journal's uh, instructions to authors and ensure that your paper uh, is correct regarding rules and guidelines for submission uh, for this uh, specific uh, journal. And uh, it's one of the main reasons for the paper's return to correction, not following the instructor, instructions uh, to the authors. Uh, many journals uh, request one of more, or more of these items uh, at the initial submission process. So uh, you have to declare a conflict of interest. So there, there is a conflict of interest statement. You have to declare the funding uh, source and uh, uh, there are auto agreements or auto declarations. Uh, conflict of interest statements are very important and the conflict of interest set uh, the conditions in which professional judgment concerning a primary interest may be influenced by a secondary interest, uh, such as the financial uh, gain. And the declaration of interest or the disclosure uh, statement is a notification from the author that there is no financial or personal interest or belief that could affect the, the results, the objectivity of the, of the manuscript. And if you have uh, any uh, conflict of interest to declare, to disclose, you state the source in the nature of this potential conflict. Uh, there is a very uh, uh, interesting example for the ICMDE, the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. Uh, it's free for download for the ICMDE uh, website. And uh, it's a suitable document you can you can use uh, this document to disclose that you have no uh, conflict of interest. If you have uh, any, you can use also this, uh, this, this example to declare your potential conflict of interest. Uh, the funding sources is also very important. You have to declare any funding uh, 
uh, or research grants uh, receive uh, in this course of the study. And uh, uh, you also have to put it in the manuscript. Uh, we can see here some examples for the FAPESP from the Sao Paulo state and CNPQ from the Brazil's uh, central government and the NIH. And the, the auto agreement declaration, which is a statement to certify that all the authors, uh, the, the, the principal author and the co-authors have seen and approved the final version of the manuscript. And that uh, you have to warrant that the article is the author's uh, original work and that uh, you, you have not received prior publication and uh, also is not under consideration for publication in another journal. So uh, the main uh, is, uh, tool to communicate with the editors is the cover letter. So how to write uh, a cover letter? The cover letter is an opportunity to convey important pieces uh, of information about your manuscript to the editors. And that cover letter is a simple, brief letter designed to introduce uh, your manuscript to an editor. So uh, there, there are uh, very uh, uh, tips uh, to, to, to write a very straightforward cover letter. So I'll give you some tips here. And that you have to give uh, a brief, uh, a largely not technical summary uh, of the method, explain how uh, it will have an impact and why the methods and applications will be interesting uh, to the readers, to the readers of your paper. Uh, put your work in context and explain the novelty and the specific advances of your work. Tell about any related work from you or from your group. Uh, which are under consideration uh, to publication in another journal or already in press in another journal. And mention uh, if you have previously discussed your work with another editor because editors uh, know each other. It, you, have, uh, you may provide a list of potential or not uh, reviewers with email addresses and a short uh, a brief description of their expertise, which is of course related to uh, your work. Do not simply uh, uh, reiterate that you have submitted a paper. You have to be more personal uh, with the, the, the editor. Do not summarize your results because the editor will read your paper and the long uh, cover letters are usually redundant. Uh, uh, a good cover letter is just one page. Do not highly use highly technical uh, jargons or acronyms, and do not assume your scientific reputations or endorsements from others uh, in your field, and uh, do not address your cover letter to dear sir, use dear editor, uh, because we have a lot of uh, great females uh, editors in chief. This is a great example for, from the American Journal of Experts. It's uh, free at the American Journal of Expert, Experts uh, website. And you can use this uh, example to write your cover letter. Uh, during the submission, it's very important to follow the reporting guidelines. Reporting guidelines is a simple and structured tools uh, for researchers to use why while writing manuscripts, uh, this kind of document provides the minimal information required in a manuscript to ensure the understanding of your results uh, by the readers, replication for another uh, research using a clinical practice, and uh, of course, use uh, your data uh, in a systematic review. Um, reporting guidelines are usually a checklist, and you can use this checklist uh, pointing out uh, which part of your manuscript uh, you report this I, the item that uh, is stated in this checklist. Checklist. It's very important to the editor to to check that uh, you report very uh, you report all the important parts of uh, a uh, specific work in your manuscript. You can find all the reporting guidelines in the Equator Network uh, platform. Uh, for example, the Consort for Randomized Trials, the STRUB for Observational Studies, and so on. 
Uh, during the review, the editorial process, you're going to be submitted to a review and a decision, the decision from the editor in chief or the associate editor. So we can expect a decision uh, from the editor. Uh, general publication process uh, is, of course, different between journals, and most journals inform the actual uh, editorial and the production time at the journal inside space. So you can, can go to the to the journal website and you, you can find uh, the process of your manuscript submission. Uh, reviews uh, are confidential. The peer review is confidential, and reviews must not share. Uh, the review or information uh, about the review or about your manuscript without the agreement of the editors and the authors involved. Uh, the revision, uh, the revision is a very important part, uh, of course, and after the editors or peer review, you may ask to revise your manuscript and of course you can uh, ask for an extension of the due date to, to reply uh, the editor if you are revising. Uh, after the, the editor's uh, decision, you can go to four different ways. You can revise your submission and explain why you did not uh, revise uh, certain reviews comments because uh, you don't agree with that, but you have uh, to put that in context uh, and uh, use strong uh, justifications uh, to know to the editor that you are right. Uh, the rebuttal letter or the response letter addressing uh, the reviewer's comments. And uh, uh, if the editor rejects your paper uh, uh, at the first time or during the editorial process, you can also uh, write a, an appeal letter or you can withdraw your manuscript and uh, try to submit to another journal. So here, you're going to discuss now the rebuttal letter, which is the response letter. It's also a very critical part uh, during the editorial process because after the, per the, the first, second, or third uh, review, and, and you, you have to revise your, your paper, your manuscript, you have to, to, to write a response letter, your rebuttal letter. So how to write a rebuttal letter? So uh, first you have to acknowledge the reviewers uh, for their time over the paper. Acknowledge that uh, a misunderstanding uh, may be due to a poor presentation of your part. Copy the full text of each uh, review's comment or questions and reply and on every concern raise it. It's very important. Distinguish reviews comment from your reply. Uh, your reply uh, must be more straightforward and uh, in the writing process and you can distinguish. First, you, you copy uh, and, and paste the review comment and after you can uh, go with your uh, response of your reply. Include the relevant citations completely or with DOIs. Include pertinent new data uh, as figures, tables, or attachments. Be succinct and avoid epic uh, discourses. Be equally respectfully, respectful for all the reviews and of course uh, for the editor. Do not accuse reviewers of bias or incompetency and do not pledge that for personal or monetary reasons, uh, critically important steps were not performed. You don't have to, to pledge for that. And do not ignore specific requests by uh, reviews without a comment. And as I said, if your paper uh, was rejected by the editor at the first time or during the the editorial process, you can write an appeal letter. Appeal letter is only read by the editor. You can consider whether we have a good case for appealing that's not worth uh, investing time in the process. Clearly explain uh, the reasons why you disagree with the decision. Explain how you plan to rectify any major shortcomings uh, pointed by editors or pointed by the reviewers. 
provide evidence for any accusations of reveal bias and do not uh, do not do anything in the heat of the moment you it's it's uh it's, it's a great to uh it's good to wait for for a time uh read again the decision and uh, after the hit of the moment you can write your appeal letter do not simply reaffirm the importance of the work do not try to bribe the editor with promise uh, of high citations do not assume uh, the paper must be interesting just because similar papers have been published before, especially in that specific journal. And do not expect to sway by your scientific reputation. And uh, of course, do not rally on celebrity endorsements. And uh, uh, the last tip for appeal letters, do not appeal every decision because uh, this kind of uh, decision to rejection, rejection by the editor, uh, it's the, the editorial process. Uh, if you are a researcher and if you write your manuscripts, you have to deal with some uh, rejections. Thank you.